What's up guys, welcome back to Review Space. Today I want to talk about the top 10 most underrated video games of all time. And they get a really low score, I think a lot lower than they should get. And they might not be the most perfect game out there, but I think they deserve a bit more credit. Okay, let's begin. Number 1. Beatdown Fists of Vengeance came up with the Xbox way back in 2005. It's got a Metacritic score of 51 out of 100, okay? And the only user score available for it gave it a 4 and a 2. Uh, so a 4 out of 10, 2 out of 10. I personally feel that this game is at least an 8.5. It's a really enjoyable game. And basically, it's a pseudo open world beat em up fighting game hybrid with some RPG elements in there. So you fight all kinds of enemies over and over again and you earn uh, experience points and level up your character as you move along. Now, what drags this game down, and the reason it's basically given its score, is that the entire game is set at nighttime. okay? It's just horrible looking. Uh, the environments look very dark and very drabby, very uninter uninteresting uh, look and, and aesthetic to the game. Also, there's a lot of loading times, so every time that you enter inside a, a different area, area or a section of the game, there you go, loading, loading, loading. What I liked about this game though, and why I think it's underrated, is that the phenomenal addictive gameplay. And there's a lot of replay value as well. Uh, the fighting mechanics have a lot of variety, it's very accessible, the controls are easy to pick up, but you get a lot of moves to perform against the enemies. And I also love the fact that you can just walk up to random opponents and enemies on the street, challenge them to a fight, and as you're beating them up or pummeling them, you get the option to either uh, recruit them to your party. So you can force them to be a part of your crew, uh, shake them down for some money so you can rob and steal money from them. Um, you can interrogate them for information. Or you can basically just stab them to death in the beatdown mode. I also like the whole consequences aspect of it because when you perform actions in the game you do get consequences something happens that's sort of like a result of what you did so if you stab somebody to death for example basically the cops start to come after you your wanted level goes up to a hundred percent and then so now every turn everywhere you go the cops are going to be looking for you to beat you up and fight you and fortunately there's a lot of customization options in the game which allow you to change your hairstyle, your clothing, accessories, uh, even like get plastic surgery, get tattoos. So you change up your appearance so that the wanted level goes down and the police will recognize you much much less so they don't attack you ne nearly as much. And I also like, <laughs> even if you fight somebody, you know like an enemy over and over again and you keep losing to that particular enemy, you're gonna eventually get this post trauma post-traumatic stress disorder kind of thing where your character is now men mentally affected so even enemies on the street will refuse to fight you because they think you're just too weak and you're too scared so in order to cure yourself of this post-traumatic stress disorder you gotta beat that enemy that you kept losing to in the first place just little touches like that little touches like the slow motion effect so when you're beating up an opponent he goes down and but it's like this slow motion kind of thing and once you hit that final move it's very satisfying overall this game is an excellent beat-em-up that's ultimately affected because of its terrible graphics and environments otherwise it plays really well and I wish maybe they made a, a remake or an updated version of it with better environments alright number two Secret Service came out on the PS2 way back in 2008 <sighs> IGN gave this a 25 out of 100, okay, and the user score is 0 0.8. I think people wouldn't even care about this if this wasn't made by the same people who put out Call of Duty. Alright, it's by Activision, and I believe it was developed by, was it Infinity Ward or Treyarch? I don't know, but regardless, what really drags it down is that the terrible and outdated graphics, the environments look really, really bland. And you're also facing the same enemies over and over again. It's very repetitive. The problem too is that it feels very low budget. The presentation is just... It's like they spend maybe a thousand dollars on the graphics. 
Why I like it though is that it's got pretty good gameplay and the shooting mechanics is it works well. I mean, it's very responsive. The controls are on point. It has a Call of Duty-esque style to it, but also the touches of Bioshock make it kind of fun because of there's like puzzle elements in there when you're disarming the bombs, for example. Uh, the weapons, there's a variety of weapons you can choose, and they all work fine. I mean, it feels like you're playing a, a modern uh, warfare type of game. And uh, I, I honestly think Secret Service is relatively underrated. And I think it deserves a bit higher than, you know, a, a freaking 25 out of 100. I give this a solid 7, maybe 7.5. Number 3, Bionic Commando for the PS3. Came out in 2009. Okay, and I mean, I understand it also came out for 360, but these are going to be very console specific because these are the versions I played. So if I say PS3 2009, it's the system that I played it on. Uh, the Metacritic score gave it a 71, you know, the users gave it a bit higher with 75. I think that this game is at least an 8, if not an 8.5. I mean, what drags it down though is that the bionic arm itself can be somewhat difficult to control and you need to be very precise and perfect with the accuracy. And also, I feel like the original fans of the Bionic Commando games, the 2D ones, just did not give this game a chance and they just didn't like the character design. Why I liked it though, it's got very good action type of gameplay with these platforming powers and the, the whole swinging mechanics and the grappling mechanics is really well done. And the first person, well not first person, uh, rather third person shooter elements. So you can actually pick up a weapon and shoot uh, enemies down. Uh, the bionic arm weapon can be very fun to use if you know how to do it. Um, the good environments really help the game as well. You know, the, the buildings and the skyscrapers, the cities look really good. And you get this great sense of scope and gravity when you're swinging around these areas and being able to just uh, explore these environments. Number four, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. This one came out for the PS2. Uh, way back in 2005, and uh, it's got a meta score of 60 and a user score of 7.1. This game is a solid 8, if not an 8.5. I mean, I really enjoy this. Uh, what really drags it down, though, is it's a very short game, maybe 5 hours at best. I mean, I don't know, maybe even less. Uh, they also change a lot of scenes from the actual movie, which just makes it feel kind of inaccurate. The reason I like it so much is that it's got a great variety of environments, the stages and the segments, uh, the graphics look great, uh, the lightsaber control is very satisfying to use, and it actually feels like you're wielding a lightsaber for real, like, it's kind of complex. Uh, it works really well, uh, the force powers, throwing the lightsaber around, the different moves, it just works really well. Uh, the enemies can be fairly challenging, and I also like the whole leveling up thing. Alright, number five. Crash Nitro Kart for the Xbox, the original Xbox, came out in 2003. It's got a meta score of 70, which isn't bad, but it's not, I think it should be higher. This game is at least an 8.5. What drags it down is it's basically seen as nothing but a Mario Kart clone, okay? It's like a generic ripoff of the Nintendo exclusive Mario Kart games. Why I liked it is that it's got excellent uh, stage designs, uh, good graphics, a uh, variety of stages. They actually look good, okay? The gameplay and the controls are on point, very solid and accessible. The music is really nice, and overall, it's just a well-presented game. I think this is one of the best kart racing games of all time, and I personally like it way better than Mario Kart Double Dash, which came out uh, in the early 2000s. Number 6, Killer Instinct for the Game Boy, that's right, came out in 95, uh, GameSpot gave it like 6.7, I remember back in the 90s, Nintendo Power even gave it like a, like a 7 at best, you know, I feel this game is incredibly good, it should be like an 8, 8.5, what really drags it down is it's basically a downgraded version of the actual arcade game from the mid 90s. Some of the characters are missing, um, various moves and animations have been taken away, 
the graphics are kind of dated even back in the 90s. The reason I like it so much is that the gameplay is excellent, uh, probably the best fighting game on the Game Boy. Uh, many of the combos have been retained, the faithful controls, special moves, the music is outstanding. The characters play really close to the original version and overall it's a really good adaptation on a really far inferior system like the Game Boy. Number 7. Tetris Worlds came up for the Game Boy Advance in 2001. Uh, it's got a Metacritic score of 65, which I feel is incredibly low. What really drags it down, it's Tetris. Why I like it so much, it's fucking Tetris. It's the same exact game from like 25 years ago, but it still owns. I mean, this game has a lot of replay value. It's never ending, and it just requires a lot of skill and Basically, you just have to be good at it. If you ever got into Tetris in the first place, this is where you to freaking go. And as far as the graphics, it's nothing outstanding, but it looks okay. Number 8. Splatterhouse. Came up for the 360 in 2010. I mean, you know, PS3, all that stuff too, but got a better score of 62-62. Uh, what drags this game down is that it's kind of redundant. The gameplay is very, very predictable and very simple. And the environments, even though the graphics look very colorful, it can be very derivative. Now why I like it so much, it's a very solid beat-em-up. It's a nice 3D remake or rendition of the classic 2D games, uh, the Splatterhouse games. The characters are really cool, uh, especially the voiceover of the, the mask itself. Very sarcastic character. Uh, the game is really bloody and it's got a lot of these horror themes and elements. I just like that mindless fun, you know, very accessible, and I like the finishing moves and the kill animations and stuff like that. You also get the original Splatterhouse games, so that's a nice bonus as well. Number 9. Time Shift. Came up with the Xbox 360 from 2007, and uh, got a meta score of a 70, okay? A 70. I really like this game. I think it deserves more than that. Uh, what drags it down though is, I don't know if it's people had, you know, access to too many shooters back then. Maybe it was underlooked at the time because of other games like Halo 3 and Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. And also, I mean, the graphics, they're not bad, but they're not outstanding either. They looked kind of mediocre at best. Why I really like Time Shift though is that it's got great gameplay as far as a solid first person shooting type of game. Uh, it's got these futuristic elements. Personally, I mean, I like it even better than Halo. Uh, it's got cool powers, cool abilities type of thing where you can stop time or slow it down and you can just attack enemies with more precision. It, it's just fun to use. I think it's a fun caper type of game. It's a well-paced game. That you'll want to, you know, beat from beginning to end. And number 10. Manhunt 2. Manhunt 2 from uh, 2007. Uh, this one is the PS2 version. I also believe it came out on the Wii and the PSP, though. I got a Metacritic score of 67, you know, a 7.3 user score. Uh, I think this game is a solid 8. What really drags it down is that, uh, from what I understand, the killing scenes and the animations in the, the finishing moves were kind of distorted and censored a little bit because of the bullshit, you know, ESRB, it's too violent type of nonsense. But the reason I really like it is that it's got awesome stealth mechanics, you know, hiding in the shadows, uh, sneaking up behind uh, enemies, you know, the, the gameplay is really tense, uh, the stages that require you to play it a little bit more smart and more uh, calculating than just rushing in there and just shooting everybody because that's the it doesn't work, you're gonna get destroyed. It's got these survival horror aspects and elements to it, and it just has a compelling backstory. I like the character. Uh, fairly stylistic, and it's a very dark and violent game. Alright, so that's it. That's my top 10 underrated video games list. Let me know what you think that you felt were underrated games that were basically not given enough credit and should be given a little bit more credit.